Hello, Aquaculture Tribe. Based on our last week's survey, which we ran on our YouTube channel, uh, this was uh, most people said that we should have this video about RAS farming. So here I am addressing some of your questions and based on some of the discussions I had recently with you guys uh, privately. So these are some of the issues related to the RAS farming and what is the future of RAS farming and what should be the right approach for you when you're doing the RAS farming. We have plenty of RAS farming content here, content already here on YouTube. So please watch other videos as well. And please subscribe to the channel to stay updated and press the bell icon button to, to keep yourself updated. And uh, yeah, so... Let's jump in without uh, getting too much into nitty gritty. So what what is this future of RAS farming and uh, what is the right approach? What is actually mean by this title today? So because, you know, we want to expand fish farming. We want to uh, kind of increase the production of uh, fish farming locally. We want to produce, the basic idea is to uh, have a lot of local fish farming. I mean, most of, peop most of the people who are listening to these videos, they are really, uh, some of them are uh, the farmers and entrepreneurs, ingredient suppliers, and people who want to learn more about these things. So, so many of them, when they want to start something, they really think that, of course, the RAS is one of the easiest way to start something. So, so this is something. Uh, it, it's it's very important to to discuss this this methodology of RAS and uh, how to do it in a right way. Uh, so far, we know that there are like uh, hundreds of uh, small projects out there uh, in the RAS farming. People are trying all over the world, different species. But uh, what is really the right approach? Because uh, once you are starting this type of uh, project and after uh, two, three years, you, you realize there are so many issues. And some of these issues are, of course, uh, biology related. And uh, some of these issues are uh, technology related. But um, what about the feed? Uh, this is because uh, so many people are facing problem because of the fish feed itself. Uh, of course, now if you are two to three years in in these projects and you have solved your biology problem, the the death is less. You are feeding them optimally. Uh, the technology is right, and you are hitting your numbers well. Things have started to grow a little bit. But then the main problem remains, and that is more fundamental problem and long-term problem. How do you secure this long-term uh, sustainable feed supply, let alone sustainable feed? So in this, many people are, of course, having these issues that they have to uh, have import this expensive feed from other places. They don't have the access to, to their own feed. Uh, and this is also one of the challenge now. And this is uh, too much of a challenge because, because, of course, if you are working too hard on making the biology right and technology right, who has the energy to do the feed right or make, let alone make your own feed? So in this regard, uh, that's why I wanted to focus on today's lecture on the feed and uh, how uh, we can make sure that this uh, RAS venture you have started, land-based fish farming venture has started, goes successfully. So uh, the other day I was chatting with uh, also with in another project and that was like we were thinking that maybe the ultimate solution should be that if you have like some certain state or like two, three states, and then you have a collective, let's say you have like the 20 farmers starting this small scale RAS projects producing uh, fish. Maybe you should have a collective and maybe you should have a, a collective for fish feed. I, I, 
And this type of um, collective is not really uncommon. Uh, you take this uh, dairy production, for example, the milk production. This type of collective are are possible. And in, in Denmark, for example, people are doing it. That's just one example. So similarly, when you're doing this type of uh, grass farming projects in a region, maybe we should really think about these collectives that that we pull up together and then we produce 10,000 ton or 20,000 ton of fish feed, whatever we need based on our local uh, situation. And then you need also the ingredients for that. And then you need to have a technology for that. And there's a long list of things you need to do. Uh, you need technique, you need formulations, you need uh, uh, technology, you, you need a lot of things. But other than that, uh, a few years ago, uh, I mean, we've been thinking about these things. What is the best possible way to actually improve this sustainable protein and increase the production? So I have been also uh, involved in a lot of discussions. And from those discussions and those projects, I came up with something. Uh, I think uh, I published an article around it. And even we had a YouTube video on this thing. Local 5 concept. Maybe you remember some of you who are following the channel for a long time. But some of you may not. But that is something uh, a lot has changed. And there are uh, kind of a uh, lot of new things also came into the local 5 concept, which I had. So I'm going to share that concept with you. That how we can improve the overall sustainability at the same time and the production of uh, fish based on the RAS systems, for example. And the RAS systems could have a various variability. It could be a mix of RAS, it could be a flow through, it could be a bioflock, it could be have other degrees like uh, aquaponics, for example, or hydroponics in some cases. So really depends on the local situation and uh, the level of technology you have and the level of investment you have. And uh, talking about investment, of course, Aquaculture Tribe is here to help you uh, to scale up. Aquaculture Tribe is here to do all sorts of heavy weight lifting and help you need. But let's jump into this local five concept to, to have this refresher and understanding that what is the right approach in my understanding. So in my understanding, the right approach is that the fish species you are farming is really important. So if you are sitting in a very warm place and then you are thinking, maybe you should have Atlantic salmon, uh, that is a very wrong approach. You should always think about what is your water temperature. You need to really think about your own local water conditions. What is the salinity level? What is the temperature how much is the ammonia? How much is the nitrate? How much How much is other contaminants? And what is really the good water quality and all that? So we have some videos on that about water quality. I think is one of the animated videos on this thing. So take a look at that. And then you have also the local fish species is super important. So you can't really grow uh salmon in that place where that is more suitable for trout farming or you can't grow uh tilapia in that place which is more suitable for shrimp farming so you really need to uh in, in the start to be very clear about this thing because once you are deeper into your project after three to five years you suddenly realize that you've made a wrong decision to start with and that was the fish species and you design your tanks based on that, you design your whole system based on that, all the contracts, all the suppliers and everything, you have to really be sure what species you are um, going to do. And then of course, the feed ingredients. Feed ingredients, I mean, here I say 50, 60% of the cost, I would say even more, 60, 70, 80% up to. So you have a lot of big, big work to do related to the local fish feed ingredients. What are those ingredients? How are we are going to formulate the feed? Which scale are you going to produce? What is the situation? Feed supply is super, super important. So this is a really big question. Well, and that's why today's focus is on feed. So we have to have the right ingredients. Uh, we have to have 
uh, the technology available. We have to have the scale availability uh, ability to, to, to make that fish feed by yourself profitable and suitable. Because in many cases, if you just produce few hundred kilos or few hundred, a few, few tons, maybe that's not even cost effective. It happens also a lot. So we have to really think about how do we optimize this thing and what is the best possible way. So the knowledge of fish feed, which this channel has always been promoting and helping you guys with the formulations and engaging with you guys at all times from all parts of the world doing these things. It's super important that you pay attention to this topic because without the local fish feed and local feed ingredients based on also local five concept, you cannot achieve the greater success. And you also need to understand what are the local market conditions? Uh, are you kind of selling something which people don't really want in your market? Uh, are you producing a fish? Uh, are, are you producing maybe tilapia in the fish in a market where nobody likes tilapia? Uh, maybe you're producing trout in a market where everybody likes shrimp or carp or uh, catfish. So how would you do that? So so you have to really be sure and you have to have all these contracts in hand. And that is a good thing about these bigger projects. They really First, they close the contracts with the supermarkets and then later on they start producing the fish species which they really are sure they will be able to sell. That's super important, guys. And then you have also need to consider the local laws and regulations. And this is a very touchy topic. Uh, local laws and regulations are super important. You have... Um, kind of some countries really friendly towards this fish farming. Some countries are not. Some states are super uh, happy with fish farming. Some are not. I mean, look what is happening in the U.S. Uh, look, uh, in, even in Norway, it's, it's not the same, not the kind of the, it's, it's very complicated, some laws. And then you have Denmark, for example, that's also complicated. Imagine you want to start a project in Sweden. Maybe the municipality wouldn't even give you the permit to do it. So many things you have to be, you have to understand about the local laws and regulations before you're jumping in, before you're going some, doing something bigger. That's really important. And that's why this, in Local 5 concept, we have this point called small size matters. So if you think like every, and you are going to be a great entrepreneur and going to produce like 50,000 ton and 30,000 ton and even 10,000 ton for that sake, first really learn how to produce 20 ton, 100 ton, or maybe a thousand ton, depending on your size. So always start small, very small, figure out everything in a very basic way, in a very kind of detailed way, and then you scale up. And that's why the small size really matters. And also, if you're doing smaller scale, multiple units, you are also going to kill less fish, going to make less mistakes. Your biosecurity is going to be much more better. So it really is a good point that you have to uh, make sure that the size, what you are thinking is okay size. And we are here to help. And in case, of course, you want to scale up and all that ESG investing, sustainable finance, that green investing, whatever you call it in your local region, uh, we can help. So this is today's video. Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, kind of bureaucracy type because we have talked about the local laws and this type of thing. But I hope you learned something. And uh, if there are some questions, please don't uh, feel shy. Just go ahead and ask as always. Send an email. Let's stay in touch. And there's another thing. We also have this um, thing. You can support the channel in a different way. We even started this buy me a coffee. If you want me to, if you want, uh, if you want to buy a coffee uh, for me, maybe you can also. Uh, buy me a coffee and I will actually if, if you buy me a coffee 
I'm going to talk about you, that you bought me a coffee. And I'm go going to say your name even in this, in this, some YouTube video sometime that, oh, this person bought me a coffee. So just go ahead, buy me a coffee if you want to. If you don't want to, don't need to. I have coffee machine. So whichever way, uh, support the channel, uh, join. We also have the membership join button. I mean, it's like a few, few dollars which can come in and it can actually help in a way, uh, I mean, to, to motivate, to pay the people, to, to edit the videos. If you want better qualities, of course, we need people to, to, to kind of edit those videos, right? Otherwise, you keep getting this boring presentations <laughs> so you have to really uh, come up with new ideas how to support the channel support the channel so that we put more resources in your education simple as that and thank you for listening and uh, have a great time and uh, please also do let me know which type of video or lecture you will like to have in the next video uh, so we prepare for that. I'll put a survey on that as well. Uh, so yeah, have a nice time and happy farming and happy learning. Bye-bye.